I don't know why I said whatever <laughs> instead of saying penis you d- outright. You decided to and, censor yourself for the one time, you know. I know, and now I'm just going to keep saying penis, you know, until mm. I'm all penised out. Penis it up, bro. Infirmary Media. is reaches into your brain chemically and locates your happiest memory chemically and then locks onto that emotion and freezes it chemically and then it keeps your happy happy hello 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 and welcome to the selling out show I am one of your hosts, David Schultz, and not by my side because this man is on location having a grand old time in Colorado, Nate Gorzinski. Nate, how the heck are you? Man, I'm doing great. We'll we'll get into it later, but, uh, you know, just in a short way, I'll say uh, I'm doing great, man. I'm on vacation. It's hard to get... Hard to get better than that. So, uh, well, that sounded like an exasperated yeah. sigh that you just you're like, Ugh. well, it's because I'm, I'm, I'm ha- great, dude. I'm having so much fun that it's like taking a lot out of me. I'll be honest with you. But, but what? But enough about me. What's what's been going on in your life, Dave? How are you? Me? Yeah, man. Well, you're off having a grand old time skiing down mountains and all that good stuff. I'm uh, going to the doctor. Ugh. I haven't been well. I haven't been feeling all that great. I've been very low energy. Wow. You know, yeah, wow is right, because I've never been, like, over the top, hey, 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 here I am, but some basic routine stuff people, you know, do throughout their day has been kind of like a labor for me recently, where I just thought, you know, I should get that checked out. Yeah. So, I go to the doctor, first thing she suggests is it's going to be my prostate, reaches up in there, and <laughs> squeeze. no, I'm kidding, there was no prostate exam, <laughs> I kind of wanted one, but I didn't get one. <laughs> But anyway, the true story. I, I promise to tell the truth now. She yeah. she says, oh, we're going to send you for some blood work, okay? Because I have a, a suspicion that you are low testosterone. Ooh, low test. Low, low test. I've always had low test scores, but now I may have low testosterone. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm a little suspicious of this because I don't know much about it. But you, yeah. you take the doctor's word because, hell, they're a doctor. Of course. Who am I, yeah. you know? And I go for my blood work. But when I get home, I Google it, which is always the worst thing they say that you can do yeah. is to Google anything. But still, this this only raises the uh, the suspicion level for me a little bit really? because uh, let me run this by you, see what you think, okay? okay. I, have, yeah. I have some symptoms here of low testosterone from medicalnewstoday.com. I have, okay. n- again, I have no idea if they're reputable, but because they're called medical news, I'm just going to take their word for it, and they can give me a prostate exam. <laughs> but anyway, okay, number one, problems with erections. Mm-hmm. I don't have that problem. I'm not trying to toot my own horn here or nothing, but, you but know. But your horn's I'm, pretty solid. I'm sturdy. I'm sturdy. Yeah. I don't have any issue with that whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Two is hair loss. Which I do suffer from, but it's been yeah. many years in the making. It's not like it was a right. overnight thing or, or you know, correspondence. Dude, I had heard that when you lose your hair, it actually means you have high testosterone and stuff. I don't know. I, maybe I'm totally off base, but I heard that the guys that usually have the receding hairlines because they have a lot of testosterone. I hope that's like, the case. I don't know. I but really that's just do. What I heard. Well, well, I'm let... not a. I'm not an online yeah. uh, reputable testosterone uh, I, I was just about to say to the authority. listeners out there do not take our medical advice we we're not giving any we're the furthest thing from uh experts on anything i guess except for our own miserable lives yeah uh reduced bone mass which i wouldn't know if i had if you to save my life right i don't know how do you can tell like do i feel <laughs> uh, uh, it says here my bones they, are feeling small today well man. <laughs> you know what funny i because i'm doing the research as we speak on air it says yeah. um the bones are more susceptible to fractures, but I haven't broken a bone since I was a teenager. So, right. uh, mm. side note, I've only broken one bone, and it was a crack in my whole life. Right. So, milk does a body good. Does a body good. Yep. Amen. Reduction in the amount of semen. 
Again, no issue there. I'm spouting off like a fountain in the middle of France. I'm shooting, I'm shooting ropes. <laughs> yeah, well, that silly <laughs> string. That's the, no, no, it's not like that. But still, yeah, that's not an issue whatsoever. You got uh, a Peter Parker, Peter? I do have a Peter Parker, Peter. Yes, indeed. Uh, yeah. Difficulty sleeping, not yeah. a problem. I sleep like a log. There's a hurricane outside. It won't wake me up. Okay, mm. so we're going through the list here now, and none of these things are really adding up to low testosterone for me, okay? Right. Uh, lowered sex drive, no. To the point where I basically have to beg my wife uh, on <laughs> schedule because I'm in I'm in need. You know, yeah. some people, they, they have sex by saying, oh, next Tuesday, next Wednesday. I, I write down when I have to beg. Uh-huh. I have to beg for this shit Wednesday night at this time. So, no. Yep. Reduced muscle mass. I've been a fat lazy slob for as long as i can remember so i don't really know if this has anything to do with it uh, my, it's I, not reducing more than usual you know it's not reducing no you're noticing no i've always been kind of an unsightly schlob so you know what, what's the big deal here hot flashes yeah. I, mind you i'm almost done hot flashes uh yeah. no uh, no menopause for me and men do go through menopause but no i'm right. good with that now uh 10 I'm already on 10. A decrease in energy levels. Yes, this is what I went there for. Right. This this is it. And I was kind of hoping she'd be like, well, here's some, you know, B12 or a safe medicinal version of monster energy drink. Just, you know, something to get, give me more kick. Or some amphetamines or something. There you go. Get me all hopped up on the meth or something. But she was just like, we're yeah. taking your blood. And then uh, finally here. I have an increase in body fat. I will refer back to the the big, fat, useless glob that I am. So really, the only thing I have is the decreased energy. So I don't know how that corresponds here with her her diagnosis. Right. I think you don't have low testosterone. I think you have low energy. Like, it's it's a thing in itself. That's all it is. It's not necessarily a symptom of something bigger. Mm. She just wants to, she wants to get you on some fucking... Viagra. Maybe she likes you. Maybe she just like wants to talk sex with you, and she's uh, I don't know. That could be the case. Uh, I mean, we just went over how I basically just look like shit. So yeah, why wouldn't she be attracted to me? Absolutely. My thing here is, I believe. Okay, and stop me if you think I'm wrong. My doctor is mm-hmm. a motherfucking quack. <laughs> Yeah, man. So as I mentioned at the beginning here, I, uh, I've i been out in beautiful Vail, Colorado for the last about two weeks. And I come here, I've been fortunate enough to be able to come here for the last several years. I always come at this time of year. And the irony of that is that my girlfriend always laughs because I hate the winter. I've mentioned before on the show, I believe that I get Seasonal affective yep. disorder, yeah. yeah, I get a, you know, I, I, I do not like the winter. But I live in New England. Massachusetts winters are notoriously bitter and just a lot of shoveling and all that nonsense. And it, there aren't a lot of, there, there are a few ski resorts within driving distance, but it's it's kind of a pain in the ass to get to them. And, and so the point is, right when it's getting warm, it's, you know, mid-April, I come out here because my birthday's coming up it's kind of a birthday trip i come out to colorado right as it's getting warm back home to catch a few more weeks on a mountain covered in snow and my girlfriend cannot understand not too many people could it's like saying fuck you groundhog i want you know two more weeks of winter (laughs) yeah but it's i'm telling you man it's totally different when you have like i understand now how my brother my brother moved mind you from san diego which sounds like paradise to me you know sun beaches all that to to the middle of colorado where there's snow but now that i've been out here a few years man i can i can see they dude he lives comfortably out here man you know he works he does this thing he makes his money but he definitely goes riding all winter he snowboards i ski i think i could handle it if I lived where he, he literally lives across the street from goddamn Vale Mountain. It's, it's, I can see it like out the window right now as I'm wow. talking. And yeah, I mean, unfortunately, the last day was yesterday. And I, just before I get off this topic, I just want to mention the, the final day of Vale's season is always this huge party. I mean, I put stuff up on my Facebook page. Maybe I'll throw a few up on the selling out Facebook page just to kind of, 
give people an idea of what it's like out there, man, because it's picture a music festival, you know, you're shoulder to shoulder with people around you, but everyone's friendly. There aren't necessarily bands up there. You're on the top of a goddamn yeah. mountain, but the view is the view is beautiful. People are grilling up food. They're passing whatever to each other, you know, and whatever uh, I've met whatever you know without getting too uh graphic but it's yeah, just you know, I, I get your right like, i get hey, the drift right here it's colorado you know it's a uh, rocky mountain yeah, high baby. country here you know it's it's uh it's beautiful but but i'm telling you it's an experience that i i wish everyone could 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 get to see because it's just i don't know it's it's another world man it's uh everyone's pretty chill out here maybe it's all the legal weed but uh yeah i've been having a good time my brother and uh and his his roommates are all veterans of the fine dining food and beverage industry so they're all amazing cooks so we're eating like you know fine dining quality food every night for like you know the fraction of the cost it's 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 amazing they all have worked at really nice restaurants so i'm living the life i apologize for it sounds bragging. like i'm yeah you're bragging it in your face mr low, yeah. low testosterone man over there i am I'm a, I'm full of energy. I'm full of beans over here in Colorado, my friend. I wanna I wanna go find somebody who's visited Vale and got gonorrhea just to kind of counterbalance your your good vibes. <laughs> and some guys like fuck that place, man. My balls were green for a month. Yeah, I have this souvenir from Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> some scarring, there scar tissue and uh, yeah, exactly. bad memories. Jeez, well I'm glad yeah. you're having a good time. I am wondering though, since you ski yeah. and he snowboards, and these are the ultimate white person mm -hmm. problems. Is there any kind of like, yeah. uh, you know, what am I trying to say here? Rivalry? Ri not, not just rivalry, but like he looks down on you. I will say this. There is a generalized, I want to call it a rival. You're more on point with the way you put it. The snowboarders often look down on the skiers because, you know, it's not as cool. It definitely doesn't look as cool. But uh, I don't know, man. I, I always say this. I've been skiing since I was a teenager and... I know that learning to snowboard will be several days of just being on my ass the whole day. So considering I only come out here for a handful of days every year, I'm really not, I, I'd like to make the most of each day and actually do something I'm good at and mm -hmm. have the exhilarating experience and all that rather than just be on my ass every six feet down the mountain. Yeah, so stick with what you know. I'm, I'm, I'll be 40 in like a week. I don't think I'm uh, learning any new tricks in that, in that regard. So You are an but, old dog. This much That's is me. true. Yes, indeedy. So I mm. I can see what you're saying, though. You're only there for a limited amount of time. Do what yeah. you know you enjoy. Have a good time. And don't embarrass yourself Absolutely. when you're hanging or out. Or hurt with myself. All, well, yeah, well, that's all secondary. We know that. Yeah. But still, you don't want to embarrass yourself in front of all those uh, hoochie-coochie mamas up on the mountain. <laughs> the snow bunnies? There you go. Is that what they call? Is that the like, lot exist. lizard? They're snow yeah. bunnies? Oh, nice. <laughs> it's nice. a less offensive lot lizard. Yeah, lot lizard is not as... Uh appealing as a snow bunny oh i'll yeah. have to remember that next time i visit beautiful Vale on your your uh, recommendation here absolutely my man but i'll see you guys all back in massachusetts soon and uh it'll be a shame but it'll be nice to get home so nate hold the phones do not hop on any airplanes yet because i have a couple of pre-recorded segments that we did before you went on your snow bunny hullabaloo and left me here with my low T. So we're going to play those, but okay. I want you back to do a Nate's Notes. We need a brand new one. You got it. So you, you have one? I have one. I spent the morning writing Nate's Notes while I looked out at the beautiful mountains. And, uh, yeah. Lord so. of the Veil, here he is. Nate Gorzinski is going to grace us with his Nate's Notes. I love it. So stick around. Ah, springtime. The birds are chirping, the flowers are in bloom, and the air is so fresh. Oh, wait. Who the heck is smoking butts? Yeah. Don't be that person who's breaking up the tranquility of the season by smoking those stinky cigarettes. Spring is one of the best times to start working on a better you. And how do you do that? Vaping. Curious about where to start? There's no better place than Northland Vapor. Proudly made in North Dakota, Northland Vapor's line of e-liquids contain no artificial sweeteners, are diketone free, and won't gunk up your coils. Whether you're quitting smoking or an experienced vapor, Northland carries a variety of flavors and hardware, making it a one-stop shop for all your vaping needs. 
needs. Northland believes quality doesn't need to be costly. So what are you waiting for? Get your head into the clouds and shop online at NorthlandVapor.com or visit their locations in Moorhead and Bemidji, Minnesota. Some products contain nicotine, adults only. I was just uh, eating a really nice meal, you know, before we started recording and... I love food, yes! Who doesn't, man? But, Absolutely. But, dude, it, it got me to thinking of how grateful I am that I can eat these good foods and, and have a choice in what I eat because, uh -huh. you know, for a, for several years I, I didn't have that choice and I would eat whatever chow was served to me in the, in the jails and prisons. And I, uh, you know, you have a little bit of choice as far as if you order certain items from the canteen, as I've mentioned before, you you can make something of your own. And, dude, there's a limited list of items, so it's like people get really creative in there. And, and uh, I bet. you know, and you'd be surprised, man. There are like, you know, you'd think, ugh, what can you make out of ramen and whatever they, you know, the garbage they sell in there? But there are some. There were some things that were pretty damn good, man. I uh, I was thinking back, a friend of mine used to make we would take the they, they sell a summer sausage like certain meat products they would sell you know like us that sounds really pleasant actually i don't know what a summer sausage would consist of <laughs> but just the fact that they mixed it with a season yeah. makes it sound that much more appetizing well summer sausage you can find it at grocery store it's just it's kind of like a salami it's just a it's a oh. you know it's a little like a pepperoni stick but a different flavor kind of so they would sell the summer sausage in there and people would often chop it up and throw it in their ramen or whatever they would make in there. But dude, this guy found a way he would cut up the summer sausage into little chunks. He would marinate it in this concoction where he, he mixed, you know, you could buy Kool-Aid. So he'd take the powder from Kool-Aid and uh, like a uh, red, whatever, strawberry or cherry, whatever red Kool-Aid was in there. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. then they would, he would mix it with like a, they would sell Goya Sasson packets. Oh sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. The good seasoning there, and um, he would he would he had a few things he would put in the the things that you were able to buy, and and when he he'd mix it in just a little bit of water, so it became like saucy and saucy, and uh, <laughs> and kind of thick and viscous. But he would marinate. He would like stir up the and actually put in the microwave because we had a microwave finally in the Worcester jails. They finally threw a microwave in there after uh -huh. years of heating up your soup with hot sink water but anyway he would he would put this marinating summer sa sausage in there and uh yeah whatever would cook it up the point is when it came out dude this stuff if any of our uh listeners are fans of chinese food i know not all the country has the exact same chinese food we have up here in the northeast unfortunately but uh but they sell these spare ribs these uh pork spare ribs that are boneless in a kind of Asian barbecue sweet sauce. It's very, you know, very sweet and salty at the same time. It's delicious. But the point is this kid would make that summer sausage taste exactly like the spare ribs you'd buy on the street. Wow. And yeah, it was it was amazing. And was this man of mystery Bobby Flay or <laughs> Emerald or something? Yeah, I was locked up with some food network star. But cool. Dude, I'm telling you, they could make a show about some of the things in there like dude they would make cakes out of they'd take like the oatmeal you'd, you'd get instant oatmeal you could buy and uh -huh. you know mix it with different i don't even know what they would use sometimes they'd even use like the bread we would get with our meals like the plain white bread and somehow mix that in do all these things and make like a crust and then oh creative dude they would cut up the apples that we would get at chow sometimes you get a shitty apple they'd cut it up and uh you know you didn't have cinnamon but they'd put a bunch of sugar and whatnot in it and dude they would make like a real apple pie so while i'm i am glad to be on the street eating real food i will say that you know we didn't you're able to make the best out of a bad situation in there and there were some some guys that had been in there long enough to yeah, learn how to make some decent food out of the garbage they they provided you with. So, so I don't know. I mean, it's not like living on ramen, man. It makes you do some weird shit. And thankfully, some uh, crazy scientists there got together. Yeah. So they got a Kool Aid packet 
and I got a piece of bread. Yeah, man. What am I going to make? And the funny thing is, you even just admitted you didn't even know what it was half the time. Yeah, yeah. It just tasted good, and it was different. Yeah, man. I mean, I had this horrible, horrible cellmate that I've mentioned, I believe, on another episode, but... He went by the name Cujo, which will tell you, you know, a little Everything bit. Everything you need to know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, this guy was a volatile, you know, he'd snap in a second. He was the type that really, he felt uncomfortable going to sleep in the same room because, you know, we I've mentioned before, I have no problem with, uh, with, with gay people, but the guy was, you know, homosexual. He, he only admitted it really to me for some reason because we were cellmates and he was... Honestly, I felt like he was trying to to test the waters and see if, you know, I was a willing participant because he didn't let anyone else on the block know. But a anyway, that's whole beside the point. He was he was somebody I worried about the uh, sanctity of my my butthole, you know. Oh, yeah. With. Be careful with that. I hope you yeah. brought him a couple apple pies of your own. <laughs> well, so he could dip his whatever in that and not in you. <laughs> well, the point of mentioning him has to do with the food just because this guy had weird habits like he would he taught me you get some bread with your meal usually and then you may get a piece of fruit as i mentioned either an apple but sometimes a banana so he he told me look they only sell peanut butter but if you save your banana you in your bread you can make a nice peanut butter banana elvis special sandwich which was cool yeah but one day he's i see him putting peanut butter on one piece of bread on the other one He's squirting squeeze cheese, like the yellow squeeze cheese shit that you, you know, gross processed cheese. And I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? And he spreads it. He goes, dude, I'm telling you, try it. He cut off a piece of his sandwich for me. And believe it or not, that wasn't bad. It was almost like the concept of like cheesecake. Like it's cheese and the sweetness of the peanut butter, which wasn't as gross as it sounded. But I drew the line. This guy would make, he'd take peanut butter. And then on the other side, smear a fine layer of mayonnaise. And that that was a little much for even me. I mean, I took a bite, and it was it was less horrendous than I expected. But, dude, while the point is while some people do wonders with the food you're given and, and can buy, some people are just, I apparently have been pushed off the deep end. And, are, and they're alley cats. <laughs> yeah, so... That's what they are. They're like, fuck it. I got mayonnaise. I got peanut butter. I'm making a mayonnaise and peanut butter sandwich. It all goes in Which the same it, place, you know? It does, really, <laughs> right? What's the difference if you had tuna fish an hour before and you had peanut butter, you know, a half an hour later? <laughs> it's still going in your stomach, right? This is probably this guy's rationale. After all, his name is Cujo. Yeah. So, therefore, I wouldn't think he's, uh, you know, got a fine palate. Right, right. Fair to say. And the funny thing was, I said, bring him an apple pie, and, and I said, stick his whatever in there, <laughs> when I when I should have said penis. You know. <laughs> I don't know why I said whatever instead of saying penis you outright. You decided to and, censor yourself for the one time, you know. I know, and now I'm just going to keep saying penis, you know, until I'm all penised out. Penis it up, bro. Crack open an old Milwaukee and massage that mullet. Selling Out presents Getting Loose with Lady Liberty. God bless America. Yeehaw! I think patriotism is, at this point, simply mm -hmm. an advertising strategy, bro. Okay, yeah, all right. Because you notice, like, products have to, they, they like to tout their American maidness and all that, even if the... I don't know, the things half the time are not American made, but they, uh, you'll get a shirt that says America, this and that, and America, we love you, and America, lick my butthole, you know, and all these, well, that's, that's more disrespectful, I guess, but America, let me lick your butthole is yes. more appropriate. Yes, yes. Yes. And, uh, no, I think it would this... be come lick our butthole or come, <laughs> I, we'd have to, we're gonna have to sit and have a round table about this later, but I, I get your point. Anyway, patriotism is just yeah it's it's de devolved into this way to yeah sell products and for the consumers it's it's almost like a, a dick measuring contest like how patriotic are you you know you see people with flag bumper stickers and all these things or i you know i support our troops and we all support our troops but i feel like it's a certain mindset that has to advertise all that on their own you know i maybe i'm just tired cynical of, 
yeah, I'm cynical. I look at the political climate now, and it seems like the ones that are doing all the flag molesting are our president and his people. The MAGA. Trump literally hugged the flag. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, boy, did I ever. What a weirdo yeah. that motherfucker is. Dude, it's like how much more on the nose can you get about that? So it's like I'm more patriotic than you, and I can't tolerate the fact that Football players would kneel, kneel for the national yeah. anthem, and it's really all these too. Things. It's like check the tape, right? Because if you if you look at those same shirts you were talking about, or washing machines, or anything, yeah, the components are made somewhere else, but they they might that's be assembled. That's what I was gonna get at. Yeah. Assembled in America, but that's what counts. They're yeah. still American they, jobs, man. Dude, they can't take so our true. jobs. Our they jobs. Can't ha- they they yeah. yeah, it was what uh, South Park or something, but yeah. Southern. They can't, you know, they can't have what's ours, which is just cockamamie and ridiculous. And in a post 9-11 world, which is so weird because here we are, you know, 18 years later. Yeah. And uh, but but then I kind of understood it. It was like a unity thing. Uh, yeah. I don't really see how people and, and it is controversial. We're in. Sure. You know, would anybody support the president at that time, even though he was a fucking moron to the, yeah, the, that the was utmost a... degree? Fuck, yeah. But still, people were more inclined to do so or support American stuff or imagery because of what yeah. happened to us. Right. That, that tragedy. But now, right. again, these years removed, you, you find out that most of the people still keeping up with that on a regular basis. Not someone who just has yeah. one random T-shirt in their closet or, you know, whatever. <laughs> but the people who have all the fucking bumper stickers and everything else it tend to be hillbillies. Dude, it's so true. I saw, I see, well, I see it pretty regularly. You must see it a lot in Texas. But oh, oh, baby. T- dude, people with not just bumper stickers, but actual full-size fucking flags attached to their cars or pickup trucks usually it's it i saw a car it's like i'm watching something out of a demolition derby or something like this vehicle flying down the street with a giant waving flag i'm yeah. like dude what happens if that thing comes loose and like covers the windshield of the person behind it? it's like a full-size fucking flag but you like you win but, the world cup or something they're like what the fuck are you talking about soccer what soccer right? is that like metrics <laughs> my neighbor my... here in Texas named his kid U.S. with middle name of A. So oh, yeah. yeah, they're really into it down here, baby. Huh? Yeah, man, it's 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 crazy. I feel like if you have a you have a commercial for like a truck or something manly, all you need is to put like American imagery, maybe a flag, and then you have like Sam Elliott do the voiceover, <laughs> and he just talks about America. Is that? That sense of doing the right thing and and standing up for what's right. Yeah. You know. Our 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 trucks stand for the same values of freedom that our forefathers stood for all those years ago. Whatever. It's just Yeah, we don't take no guff. People, right. People buy it, hook, line, and sinker. They like and if I have this conversation with a certain type of person, just questioning advertisers or things like that your comments i get called you know what you don't like the flag what's wrong with selling the flag what's wrong with selling america it's like it's at such a volatile point now where it's like some of us love the country but feel like it's either heading in the wrong direction or there's stuff that can be done to make it greater but then others are just a lot of them have the same issues where you know they they think the country is going the wrong direction but for other reasons like everyone loves the country but is dissatisfied with certain aspects yeah. and the problem is they just would rather argue about it than actually and and both sides to an extent are so fixated and and unwavering and unmoving in their points of view but i don't know man it's it's hard to think of a way out of this scenario. Yeah, well, for me, it's just a symbol. It could be replaced. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like to be an American, to me personally, yeah. uh, it's more a, of a sense of, of being rather than uh, particular, you know, laundry yeah. that, you, that you have. You know, it's, right. it's like one of those things where we, we could change it tomorrow and it doesn't matter to me. That's just that's a fucking piece of fabric. Absolutely. You know, for me, American yeah. values would be taking care of others and, you know, supporting those in need. And unfortunately, yeah. not everybody agrees with me. And those might have been some of the fundamentals that may have lasted for a period of time, whether short or long, that sometimes lose its way. 
But yeah. you think, I almost want to sound like a G.I. Joe cartoon here or something, <laughs> but you do the right thing. Right. And that's that's yeah. my opinion of what America should be about, do, do the right thing. And we're definitely not going in that direction right now. And the yeah. flag huggers, the people who defend the flag, you know, or so stubborn about burning right. flags and doing this and stuff like that. Listen, they might be ex-military people that feel yeah. like they fought for it. And I get all that. That's all fine and dandy. Yeah. But yeah. listen, it, again, it's, it's just a thing. It's not the people. It's not anything that really truly matters in the end. Yeah, dude. Like somebody posted something on Facebook about, you know, if our soldiers didn't fight these wars, we could be speaking German right now or some one of those cliches that you always hear. And dude, you know what? In that case, I'd just be speaking German and I wouldn't know the difference. You know what I mean? Like, true. Like, I'm I'm grateful that I live in the country I do. But if things had worked out differently, we would just be living like I'm I don't know. I'm just a citizen. I'm living under the laws that are written for me and you know i have to there there are things i don't agree with with our nation too and yeah i'm happy here i'm comfortable but i wouldn't know the difference if things had gone a different way on a different way you know what i mean like i personally wouldn't because i would have been born under those conditions but i mean even then what let's say what they what they're claiming is true okay and, and in many ways i kind of believe them because if it wasn't for those soldiers back in ww2 who knows mm. what would have happened but that's for the people you know right. it, for me personally it's not for the flag it was for the country and the people within the country but what the fuck you know like let go let go of like having symbols people like just just stop it's not something that's necessary for us to be good mm. or you know as a human race in general something right. that, that we need to represent us just well, care about people yeah. just care about the, others the issue is that a lot of those people that are so fixated on symbols they're fixated on that the same way with religion and this the symbols and the proclaiming that you're a christian and all those like it, it, those things like i notice that those things often go hand in hand the people that are so you know you you don't talk bad about my country and those are the same people that think the country was based on judeo-christian values and all these mm -hmm. things when they ignore the fact that we were based on a you know a, a concept of freedom of religion and all this like people people are just have their shit fucked up right now and and i don't know let's it's... join them you know what yeah. Fuck this let's join them let's come up with a selling out flag Let's hang it on a fucking pole. But our thing is just going to be like, live life, be happy, be cool, yeah. be kind to others. That's That'll be it. That, that's it, baby. Let's write the Constitution about that, and we'll hang up a pair of my fucking boxer shorts outside the local fucking <laughs> elementary school. How does that sound? Salute that, motherfuckers. Dave from The Selling Out Show here to tell you about Spunk Lube. Spunk Lube is a multi-award winning lubricant used by professionals in the adult film industry. Spunk is available in hybrid, pure silicone, natural, and pink. Spunk is made with the highest quality ingredients and is non-staining, hypoallergenic, and cleans with ease. Enhance your love life with Spunk. Right now, Spunk Lube is buy three, get one free. There's no excuse not to give it a try. Spunk Lube, a high-end product for an affordable price. Visit spunklube.com today and you can thank me later. Dust off your LPs. It's time for Nate's Notes. Notes. When I was a kid, I saw a scene in a movie that always stuck with me. The film in question is the black exploitation parody film I'm Gonna Get You Sucker, starring Keenan Ivory Wayans, and it's full of memorable, quotable scenes, but the scene that always stuck with me was when Wayans meets up with Bernie Casey's character, who's traveling with a comically large entourage of guys carrying various musical instruments. Bernie Casey explains that he likes to travel with theme music. Every hero should. Now, everyone can have their own theme music, hopefully on earbuds, in their own minds, but honestly, we've all been next to the guy blaring loud music on his phone's outboard speaker. He's apparently determined what everyone else gets to listen to. Very thoughtful of him. 
But anyway, I'm an earbud guy personally. My girlfriend gives me tons of shit because they're permanently in my ears. I figure even if I'm not listening to something, which is rare, I will be again soon, so I might as well just leave them in. I'll admit, I'm fairly dependent on this particular aspect of technology. I'm not a huge social media guy, I'm not really a gamer. I was left behind in the 16-bit days of Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. But the fact that in my pocket resides a device that can play quite literally any piece of recorded music on fucking demand is proof that we live in a technological golden age. For me, that's basically the pinnacle of human advancement. Sure, one could make the argument that by plugging up my ears and playing tunes throughout my day, I'm walling myself off from the real world. That I'm just another person addicted to my phone. But in defense, I will say that I usually have only one earbud in, or the music is at least low enough so I can interact with others. And besides, it can really add a new dimension to everyday life. A sense of drama, maybe some excitement. It just spices things up. So these past few weeks, I've been on vacation in Colorado, as I mentioned, and I've been skiing a lot. Now, granted, skiing is already a pretty perfect blend of exhilaration and tranquility. The beautiful surroundings and the excitement of flying down a mountain create a really unique experience. It's pretty indescribable. But a few years ago, I realized that <laughs> A selection of icy 80s goth and post-punk really adds a whole other dimension. There's nothing so perfect that a strong dose of Killing Joke and the Sisters of Mercy can't make better. So for the past few years, that was my mountain soundtrack whenever I'd hit the slopes. Joy Division, The Cure, The Chameleons. I figured I had found the perfect theme music to my alpine adventures. Then... A week or two ago, I decided to throw on some ridiculously heavy gore grind and death metal before I began my descent. Bands like Aborted and Fallujah, maybe some necrophagists. And dude, it was like a new experience entirely. It kind of shifted everything to the more exciting end of the spectrum, whereas the 80s new wavy stuff favored the serene, awe-inspiring beauty of the things out there. It was just a cool reminder of how powerful music can be. I mean, I think back to various landmarks in my own life, moments that stick out, and there was always music in the background. I remember a particularly great year when it seemed like Otis Redding was a constant companion, and I can't hear his unique plaintive singing without mentally revisiting those days. I remember dancing at a prom to Total Eclipse of the Heart, and as cheesy as that song is, I kind of smile whenever I hear it to this day. It's like, not only is music there to enhance any moment we may live through, but sometimes a song can act as a conduit to a memory, as effective as any photograph. And it's not always entirely pleasant. There are songs that may be hard to listen to because they evoke sad memories. There's a particularly awful hair metal ballad that was playing as I got my heart broken at, like, age 12, and I haven't been able to listen to it since. I mean, no big loss. It's a horribly trite 80s ballad that I wouldn't listen to anyway, but it's remarkable that almost three decades later, I still get a little sting when I think of it. The song, I mean. I don't even remember what the girl looked like. So, I guess what I'm saying is that I will continue to unabashedly season my daily routine with music, I'll continue to be addicted to the music apps on my phone, which at this point is really just a human's external hard drive. Look at that. We're cyborgs already. But yeah, I'll continue to create my own soundtrack, and more importantly, I'll continue to make memories. Because isn't that what life is all about anyway? I just find it easier to remember things with an audio cue. I feel bad for people that don't listen to a lot of music. But then again, some people feel that their lives would be empty without sports, so takes all kinds, I guess. And that wasn't a dig towards you, Dave. I know you're a sports fan, but, Ouch. you know. Ouch! <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, the right music can totally change, like, what's going on in your day, like, the way you see things, and 
And uh, you know, I'm sure you can relate to hearing a song and it bringing up some kind of memory, oh, whether good or bad. Yeah, absolutely. I lost my virginity to uh, Mr. Brownstone from Guns wow. N' Roses. Wow. Which was horrifying. It was terrible in every yeah. sense of the word. Because I remember, like, it won't, you don't know what you're doing. Of so, course. you know, you're just trying to, like, search your mind for, like, any bits of porn that you might remember so you can act <laughs> like a stud. Yeah. But I actually, like, started going along with the beat, but it wasn't the right kind of beat to go to. Yeah. So that poor, poor girl had to have me uh, gyrating and, and grooving to uh, Mr. Brownstone. So, yeah, that's definitely a specific memory that pops up when you when you start talking about the music. Right, man. You know, it's like it's amazing because that's, you know, decades ago. That's years and years ago. And and a song can bring it back. And yeah, I mean, huh. I'm God, you know, I wish it didn't. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, I did boy. mention bad memories. You know, sometimes it yeah. brings back bad memories. So. Yeah, I guess it's, you know, you change the way to look at things too, you know. I remember I used to have a shirt from this band Skinny Puppy and it said on the back, change the way to perceive and change all memory. And I was like, wow, that's, you know, it took me a minute to, it was kind of a run on sentence. So for a while I was like, what does that even mean? Change the way to perceive and change all memory. And uh -huh. I'm like, and then I realized, oh, okay, I see what it's saying. If you change the way you look at things, you know, your whole memory changes. And, right. Uh, yeah, so, you know, a first sexual experience, an awkward dance at a prom or whatever it may be, it's, you know, sometimes it's a sweet, happy memory to think back on, and sometimes I can find myself cringing at shit from 20 years ago, you know? It's yeah, it's amazing. Well, every couple has their song, you know? We, yeah. we got married and we danced to our song. <sighs> It's odd. My girlfriend and I have completely different tastes in music, and music is definitely more important to me than it is to her, which she fully admits. But, you know, we do cross over on a few things. We do. We both are the types that like to we like to dance at, you know, weddings or parties. We're kind of cheesy, but we're we're definitely a lot. You know, people people find yeah. us amusing. We're not we're not just uh, bums at the party, but. Yeah, so there's a few songs that we definitely always dance to when we hear them at the place, but it's usually more upbeat stuff. It's not like it's not like as I mentioned the totally eclipse of the heart memory where I have this like slow dance memory with my girlfriend. Most of our <laughs> songs are like, you know, jump around by House of Pain and shit like that, you know, just like party songs, dancing and whatnot. But, now that's a video you gotta put on our Facebook page. Yeah, man. All right. You gotta get I, somebody to tape us, you know, film us. No, just do it. They, everybody now just holds their, does their own selfie thing. No one even yeah. bothers to have anybody hold a camera anymore or a phone anymore. They're like, ah, fuck it, I'm with this celebrity. <laughs> ah, selfie. Like, there's no time to, to pass the phone over. But that's I want true. to address something you brought up in the very beginning. Okay. And I'm sure people listening are gonna think, Dave, you're taking it way, way too far here. Yeah. But... You mentioned the person without the earbuds. Yes. I hate it when people crank up music in their car. Yeah. And if they stop at a red light or they're parked outside your house or on your street, and they're just right. fucking, they don't even turn down the music, they're blasting it. I always consider right. that audio rape. That's a good, you know, description. I, I'm glad I you say that because I figured I was being offensive. Not at all. Because you're forcing yourself on someone else, granted, albeit it's it's you know music, but it's still you're you are forcing your shit on someone else. Yeah, and now yeah, that I yeah. have a kid, if I'm cruising down the road and the windows are open, beautiful day, and you yeah. pull up next to someone who's just blasting, I mean, completely yeah. offensive stuff. You know me, I don't want to sound like fucking tip a gore here or something. Right, right. You have the right to listen to whatever you want, but at the same time, consider others. You know, you're all sharing a space. I know. You know what I mean? So take yeah. it easy. It's like, I remember when I was a teenager, I used music, or at least I believe I used music to kind of impress girls. Like, yeah. hey, check out what I'm listening to. Like, I'll put on like a sensitive track or something. Like, yeah, I have right. a heart, baby. So I don't yeah. know if some people are doing that. Like, hey, yo, I got cred. I'm listening to whatever the case may be. Yeah, some well, heavy hardcore rap or whatever. Whatever. It is. You hear loud shit. Yeah. Maybe some people are cranking up the C and W. I don't know, but I mean. <laughs> My, yeah. my whole thing is, I don't know the reason behind needing the music that loud in public spaces. Right. Or you're just a complete and utter cocksucker. That could be right. it, too. I mean, I'm not sure. I hear you, man. That's why, like, I've I've mentioned skiing and having the earbuds in. To me, it's a singular experience. It's all mine. I'm, I'm aware that no one else is experiencing the same exact thing I am. Even though there's, you know, a bunch of other people out there in the wild with me on the mountain... I, you know, my own music creates my own little, 
world and yeah. i'm happy to be in there because i just i just sit there and smile and i realize i don't have to share it with anyone else you know some moments are just for us you know just for yourself and it's good to just kind of enjoy those it's nice to share things with people but dude you know keep keep it to yourself once in a while you know yeah especially with the music it's like not everyone likes what you like i've learned that i don't have a lot of friends that i can share my uh you know cattle decapitation cannibal corpse shit with you know but uh but i will say on this vacation i did made just a quick aside i did meet a guy that was as nerdy about death metal as i was and we exchanged bands back and forth for like the afternoon it was super fun i met him on the slopes and we just talked death metal all afternoon so yeah you know colorado's got some uh got some headbangers out here so i will i do want to urge people though if you want to be that prick who blasts your music out in public mm. sk skip the tunage and put mm -hmm. on selling out Yes, blast Dave and Nate. There you go. Share that with the world, not your fucking crappy uh, gangster rap or death metal or whatever the hell you're listening to. Make sure you share us. Sounds good. And if you're not one of those crummy motherfuckers, let us know what you're thinking about. And it's really easy. You can find us on Twitter, at Selling Out Show, Facebook, at Selling Out Show 1, Gmail, uh, Selling Out Show at gmail.com. I just said Gmail twice, so I get a nickel for every time I... I uh, do a gmail plug here and uh Wouldn't that be nice yeah, yeah there you go and uh we also have a phone number you can call us and leave us a voicemail and tell us i don't know about anything you want and that number is anything 774-701-1993 give us a buzz nobody's gonna answer it's only a voicemail so if you you know are a little worried about me picking up and going hey talk to me yeah it's not gonna happen you're safe so yeah you can remain isolated and separate behind your keyboard and phone as we all like to be beautiful thing it yep. truly is yeah well nate i gotta say i'm really happy you're having a good vacation yeah man i'm sorry you're not feeling so well but you know what i think uh i think you're gonna make it through this and everything's gonna be fine you know because i'm psychic and i know these things <laughs> So. Like I'm going through something like uh, really terrible here. Well, you're tired, man. You have low energy. That's that's that puts a fucking damper on things. Well, actually, I was about to put uh, cans at the local convenience stores with my face on them to uh, raise funds for my uh, testosterone deficiency. Help this man with his low energy and uh, low sperm count or whatever it is. Yeah, m my saggy nuts. Yeah, which I, that's another thing I don't have a problem with. Oh my <laughs> god, it continues. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank each and every one of you out there for listening. We truly appreciate it virtual hugs for all of you if i could i'd reach out and squeeze you right now but i can't so i won't but i'll talk about it i am dave that is nate and this has been selling out peace Infirmary Media.